Jason? Yes. Yep, Vinny's on the line. Great, how are you doing? Hey, Vinny, how are you? Very good, how are you? Not too bad, thanks. It's a privilege to actually finally get to speak to you. I missed you on the on the last album, unfortunately. I didn't get to do a, an interview there, but uh, congratulations on the live album. Thank you. Um, first off, the tracks on the album, um, do they reflect uh, your earlier shows um, of material played? Or is it sort of more a collection of obviously the older tracks played more recently? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, everything was recorded on the Trend Kill tour. Recorded in the United States and Canada over the past, uh, I don't know, six, eight months. And uh, that's what it is. Uh -huh. And uh, in, in playing those tracks, did, uh, you know, especially when selecting them for, for the album, did, did you hear sort of how the songs had uh, sort of changed and perhaps grown from? From their, from their infancy when they first, when you first did them? I would just say, you know, we could uh, hear uh, the consistency in the band, you know, how, how we played uh, everything over and over, uh, you know, with the same little spots that we'd always rush or drag, you know, or have a little uh, stutter to them or whatever. But uh, it was really, you know, not any true evolution. I mean, I think if you took the album and popped it on, as opposed to the live thing, you'd, you'd hear that they're pretty similar, you know, they're not big variants there, you know, that's just our style and like the way we play. Mm -hmm. And uh, what actually made it on the album, I mean, I know it was obviously uh, your favorite tracks, uh, but, but what made it, what, what made the tracks so that you chose the ones that you did? Uh, we were just looking for excitement and energy, you know, and, and really the best performance possible. When you're uh, doing a live record, we've never done one before, and, you know, it's it's one of those things where if you had the visual to go along with it, then certain mistakes and things would be acceptable, you know. If I took off running across the stage, you know, and did a knee slide, and his guitar goes, you know, makes a funky noise. It's cool, because you saw that, you know, but when you're listening to a live record, you go, oh, man, they just fucked up really bad right there, you know. That, that was the most difficult thing, was really just trying to find, you know, songs that had the performance all the way up there because, you know, everybody in this band is such an active individual on stage. If you've ever seen any of the videos, you know, they're all over the stage. And, you know, it's just difficult to play uh, to perfection, so to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. As I said, I mean, to put those tracks on a live album, say to an audience uh, like ours, who haven't actually, besides the video, seen you in that live uh, in a live arena, um, was it important that you sort of, without the aid of that video that you had, uh, that you could get that energy across strictly on something like a like a CD? Yeah, you know, just wanted to try to make, uh, you know, get the songs and, and the reaction and everything that would make people feel like they were there. You know, that's the whole purpose of a live record is for you to be able to get in your car and, and you know, have a few drinks or smoke a doobie or whatever and put the, put the CD on and turn it on 12 and, and think that you're there, you know? And I think we did a pretty good job of capturing that. Right, right, right. And uh, the two new tracks, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about those or are sort of reflective of where you're going? Uh, I would just say, you know, we wanted to give the fans the total value when we made this live record. We wanted to make it more live record and that's uh, why we just decided to do the two new studio tracks and uh, we did those in two days we wrote them recorded them the whole nine yards in two days and, uh, right before the Ives Fest and uh, we were really really having a great time in the studio everything was really clicking everybody was really focused we were really you know a lot of fun to do and if we hadn't had the Ives Fest tour booked uh, we could have stayed in the studio and, and really completed you know a full studio record because everything was going really good and I, I wouldn't say they're reflective of a direction you know those two songs could be part of an album you know and if you took two songs up and far beyond driven took them away from the rest of the record you would go is that the direction that their album's going you know it just depends on the songs that you get you know so they could be part of an album but you know they're just they're just two new songs there's no, no special direction to them or anything can you hold on one second sure Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay, and um, as I say, 
uh, a point that's uh, of great interest to me is that you have this huge, dedicated, loyal sort of fan base. Um, something that I think uh, any sort of mainstream band um, doesn't really have in the true sense of having that dedication. What do you think it is about Pantera that makes people that loyal? Well, I think they see uh, reality and they and they hear reality in music much. They look at us, they see us as people, not as rock stars or these big gods. You know, we've never put ourselves on any kind of pedestal or anything like that. We've always felt like we're uh, one of the closest bands in the world to our fans, you know, and we uh, let them be part of what we do, you know. And if you've seen the home videos, that's, there's a lot of uh, friendship and camaraderie there, and I think that's why our fans are so loyal to us. And I mean, did you find that um, all over the world? Yeah, great. You know, we we haven't been able to make it to South Africa yet, but I heard we have a lot of fans there, and I've seen the record sales, and they just blow me away. So, you know, every other place we've ever been, Australia, Japan, all over Europe, fans have treated us really with a great deal of respect and just super duper, and I know that we have a great time there in South Africa. Right. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, I think you've got a couple of people that would... Uh, probably kill to, to actually see you uh, play again, which is so, so eventually might, uh, might become a reality. Do you think that might happen? I think it will eventually, yeah. Great, great, great. And uh, as I say, with, uh, with 101 now, um, the Pantera story is complete. Uh, is it, or is this just the end of, say, a cycle and now on to the next? I would just say it's a, it's a continuation of, of what we've done, you know. It's, uh, you know, it's just a point in our career when we felt like live records would be fun to do and it would be something that anybody that's a Pantera fan would enjoy. That's the reason why we did it. Uh, you know, in the end, I bet, bet you will be one of the only metal bands in the year 2000 that's still playing metal and it really sounds like it. Yeah, because, I mean, it's an obvious question, perhaps, but uh, say in this day and age, what actually makes a band like Pantera um, as, as, as big as you are? Um, you know, because, I mean, you basically go, um, you know, you have a core cool market, um, but uh, you basically outstrip the, um, I think, the, the norm of people thinking that um, a band like yourselves could only be so big. I think you've become a lot bigger. But, uh, you know, what would you sort of uh, say uh, has made you as big a success as you are? I would just say that I know for a fact it's the non-stop touring, you know. When you can't hear your favorite band on the radio or see them on MTV, where, where are you going to see them at? You know, and Pantera has constantly, constantly toured it's every every opportunity we've had ever since 1990, you know. I mean, we just... We had very little time off, you know, and we went out and we played uh, 25 people on our first tour in empty nightclubs all over the USA and went back two months later to those same places and played to, you know, 150 people and then went back again, you know, and then there was like five, 600 people. Went did a new studio record, you know, went out, did the same stuff. You know, we opened up for anybody that would give us an opportunity, you know, we really had a great opportunity to play some super bands early on, you know, we played with. Uh, Judas Priest, we played with Megadeth, we played with Skid Row, we played with a lot of people back, you know, in the early 90s, and then, you know, we got to a, 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 a excuse me, established state where we were, uh, you know, doing our own headline thing, and we've done that for basically the past four years, and doing anywhere from 5,000 to 20,000 seat arenas, you know, on our own, and uh, we had an opportunity to go out on this ISS and uh, support Ozzy and Black Sabbath here in the United States, and that was an absolute blast, you know. So I would just say the reason why we've, uh, you know, ha hadn't had to depend on the norm is because of all the touring, you know, and that's what Panther is all about, a live band, and that's what the live records are. And I mean, just to say, you've, you've always uh, said that you, yeah, that your success is also due to the fact that you've never sold out. How would you sort of define, you know, selling out if, if that were the case? I would just say, to me, selling out would be if we came out uh, with a brand new record and it had a real nice, you know, pretty Q4 song that we wrote aimed at the radio. You know, something that never been a part of us. You know, hey, if we get on the radio, that's cool. I don't have a problem with that, but 
As long as they're playing a Pantera song that was made by Pantera for Pantera fans, not a fucking song that was made by Pantera for all the radio programmers to jump upside down and say, oh, we love this new Pantera song, you know? But that, that to me would be selling out. And from filming live to recording in the studio, what, what changes in the performance for you? Well, that's one of the things that I find really magical about the live record is that you don't have a second opportunity to do something, you know, it's very spontaneous and it's, it's just so real. I mean, you know, in the studio you can manipulate things all day and all night and you can fix things and replay things and, you know, we try to not do too much of that. Even in the studio, uh, you know, we get in there and we just go. We try to leave it very raw like a live record, you know, and, uh, that was the fun thing about making this live record is that we had uh, the opportunity to record, you know, a lot of shows. So it was never conscious that the tape player was rolling. You know, a lot of times uh, when they say, okay, well, there's a Westwood One taping and it's going to be on August 28th at such and such. You know, you'll sit there and you think about it and you think about it, you know, and you get real conscious about it and it causes you to be uh, real safe when you're playing. You, know, you don't really get that vibe that you want, you know, and, and the way that we did it, we were able to record like 60 shows, and, and all of them were, you know, really, really us having a good time and playing, you know, and that, that was the main difference, I think. And just to say, with, with the last album, um, obviously a lot of the press, and obviously the content of the album was, was, was generally negative, obviously, because it was reflective of, of where things were then. Is this sort of your... Uh, your, your, your pickup album where you sort of saying, you know, that uh, although that was set a slightly darker album, you know, I got these live checks and this is the, you know, the positive side to Pantera. Absolutely. I think uh, all the years of touring and, and, you know, Philip had some things that he had to deal with personally and I think uh, the Great Southern Trend Kill to me is still, you know, probably my favorite Pantera record. You know, it's a very, very dark record. It's a very gloomy, doomy record, but I think it's a, a good record for Pantera, and, you know, to have that uh, side of a, of emotion, you know, on, on record. Now, the live record, you know, it's really good to have that, because that's that's what Pantera thrives on, is, is the live show, and, and to have two new studio tracks that are both you know, positive messages and moving forward messages is, is really a, a plus for us, you know, and I think the fans are definitely, you know, feel it. It's going to be, you know, the next studio record, I think, is going to be a very, a much more uh, positive and, and focused record than the last one. One last one, if I can, Malik. Um, as I say, you, you've played, um, I mean, on this album, obviously, um, there's over 60 shows that you reported. How, how did you, well, how do, how do you actually keep yourself um, sort of hyped to the point that every night you're going out, you're playing to people, um, you know, how do you keep it exciting for yourselves? Well, we just do everything and anything we can to entertain ourselves on the road. You know, we're not we're not a sterile band. You know, everybody's always playing jokes on each other, and everybody, uh, you know, has things that they do. And everybody that's part of what we do is like our family. You know, we've had the same road crew for ten years, and everybody you know knows each other. And all I can say is that. You walk out on stage and you hear 5,000 or 10,000 or how many, many people are there, you know, when the lights go down and you hear the crowd come up and roar, you can't get excited for that. You're doing the wrong damn thing. Thanks for me. But if I could ask you one last favor, would you, could you do a short ID for me? Sure. Um, okay, the, the name of the station is 5FM. Uh, the, D, the DJ's name is Barney Simon. So if you could say something like, hi, this is Vinnie Paul from Pantera, and you're listening to Barney Simon on Private FM. Okay. Great, what have you read? Hey, this is Vinnie Paul from Pantera. Crank it up right here on 5 FM. You're hanging with my man, Barney Simon. Great. Thanks very, very much, Vinnie. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, you have a... Or did you go through? Yeah, as I say, believe me, I think you'll, you'll, you'll probably make a, an entire country very happy. <laughs> but... Uh, Congratulations, as I said, um, I think it's great. It's loud. It's uh, it's, it's going to sell units like it did on the last album. I can guarantee that. Um, and we'll do what we can from our side. So good, good luck with the tour as well. 
Thanks, man. Great. All right, take care. You too. Bye-bye now.